Hi, third graders. Open your science book to page 124. What are ecosystems? So you can see on this page, you see some horses grazing where they can have water and food and back here, maybe some shelter. So turn the page to 126 and let's look at the vocabulary. We have the word environment, ecosystem, population, community, and habitat. Those words are going to be very important as we read, so make sure you pay attention. Okay, follow along with me. Where things live. Living things need a place to live and grow. Fish live in water. Many birds live in trees and fly through the air. Plants grow where there is soil, water, and sun. Living things can be found almost everywhere on Earth. Some fish can live in the deepest parts of the oceans. Some plants can live on the tops of high mountains. Scorpions can live in dry deserts. Cattails can grow in swamps. Let's look at the photograph here with the caption beneath it. Remember, the caption tells us about the picture. It says, some plants live in between the cracks of pavement. So um, this is a picture of a dandelion plant that's growing in between some a sidewalk. Okay, let's look down. Let's look at page 127. The living and non-living things that surround a living thing make up its environment. Oh, I see a word in yellow print or bold print and yellow highlight. So let's read that again so we know what that means. The living and non-living things that surround a living thing make up its environment. That's a good word to know, so keep that in mind. Plants and animals use things from their environments to meet their needs. What is your environment like? Okay, so think about the living and non-living things that make up your environment. What kind of things do you have in your environment? Many, thing, many living things may share an environment and its resources. Food, water, oxygen, and space. If the environment has too little of any of these things, the living things compete with one another to get what they need. So in order for a living thing to survive, it has to have food, water, oxygen, and space. So let's look at this question. What do living things get from their environments? So think about some things that you get from your environment. Over here is a picture of a koala, and we have a caption. Koalas in Australia live in eucalyptus trees, whose leaves are their only food. So in order for a koala to live, they have to have a eucalyptus tree for both where they live and something to eat. Down here we have prairie dogs. It says these prairie dogs can survive and grow in a grassy environment. So in order for the prairie dogs to survive, they have to have grass to eat. This bird makes its nest on a chimney high above the ground. So in order for this bird to survive, they have to have things to make a nest and be off the ground away from predators. Okay, turn to page 128. Parts of an ecosystem. The organisms living in and around a pond interact with one another. A fish might eat an insect. A frog might sit on a lily pad. Together, the living things and non-living things they interact with form an ecosystem. Okay, I see a bold print word, so pay attention. An ecosystem is made up of all the living and non-living things in an environment. Remember that. Different types of organisms live in an ecosystem. A group of organisms of the same kind living in the same place is a population. Population is in bold print, so let's read that again. A group of organisms of the same kind living in the same place is a population. For example, the frogs in a pond make up one population. The lily pads in the pond make up another population. Okay, so again, all of the frogs in the pond is a population. 
Lily pads are populations because they are the same kind of living thing and they're living in a pond population. All of the populations that live in an ecosystem at the same time form a community. Hmm, another bold print. Let's see what that means again. All of the populations that live in an ecosystem at the same time form a community. Okay, let's look at the pond ecosystem. Down here it says pond ecosystem. Ponds are rich ecosystems. They are filled with living and non-living things that interact with one another. So we have freshwater turtles are the fastest are, or sorry, are faster in water than on land. They eat small frogs, small fish, worms, and plants. So turtles could be a population that lives in the ecosystem. Fish live in the water. They may reach up to eat insects just above the surface. So fish are a population that live in the pond ecosystem. Snails crawl on plants that live in shallow water near the pond's edge. So snails are a population that live in the pond ecosystem. Water lilies on the surface of the pond, or water lilies float on the surface of the pond. Frogs often rest on their leaves. So water lilies are another population of the pond. Birds, such as this kingfisher, hunt for fish and frogs near the pond's edge. So these birds are another population that live in the pond ecosystem. Okay, let's look at page 129. Each organism in this picture is a part of the pond's community. All members of a community live in the same ecosystem. However, they don't all live in the same part of the ecosystem. Fish swim in water, but birds build nests in trees. The place in its ecosystem where a population lives is its habitat. Ooh, another bold print word. So let's look at that again. The place in its ecosystem where a population lives is its habitat. The habitat includes both living and non-living things. So for example, this group of birds is part of is a population that lives in the pond ecosystem, but they live in a tree or in a nest. Whereas the fish, who are a part of the pond ecosystem, their habitat is in the water. What is the difference between a population and a community? Hmm, think about that for a minute. Well, if you go back to page 128, it says that a population is a group of organisms of the same kind. And then the community is all of those different populations living together in one ecosystem. Here's something you could try at home in an instant lab. Ecosystems around you. Find out about an ecosystem that is close to where you live. Research what types of plants and animals live there. Draw and color the ecosystem label the animals and plants. So that might be something you could do when you get home. So look for an ecosystem that is close to where you live. Okay, turn to page 130. Organisms and their habitats. Some organisms can survive only in certain habitats. A polar bear, for example, could not find the water it needs in a desert. A rainforest would be too wet for a desert owl. An organism's habitat gives it everything it needs to survive. For example, a pond has the water, food, and oxygen that a fish needs. The fish cannot survive without these things. What does your habitat provide, for you, provide you with? So think about that. Where you live, what kind of things do you get from your habitat to help you survive? Let's look at this question. What does a living thing's habitat provide for it? Here's um, a picture of some mountain goats. The mountain goats live on rocky cliffs, so they are provided a place to live and to climb. It also says where they feed on plants growing among the rocks. So this habitat provides food 
and a shelter for the goats. They also probably have a source of water since there's some snow on the picture. Let's look up here. The scarlet macaw lives high in the trees of the rainforest. It feeds on the fruits and large nuts that grow there. So in order for a macaw to survive in its habitat, it has to have trees and fruits and large nuts so that it can eat. So these are some examples of habitats that different types of animals live. You wouldn't be able to find a macaw in the cold weather because this habitat where the goats are living is not warm enough for the macaw. All right, boys and girls, so that is our chapter on ecosystems. What you need to do now is go into um, Schoology, click on the puzzle piece, and take the quiz or actually answer the questions about this chapter. Remember, you can always look back in the book for help if you don't remember the answer. All right, do your best. Good job, boys and girls. I'll see you next time.